Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I decided to make another video on kind of um, optimizing the MacBook Pro 2015, this time in Windows through Bootcamp. Uh, there are some differences in both uh, opportunities and also drawbacks using Windows on a MacBook through Bootcamp compared to Mac OS. If you want to have a look at my video in Mac OS, you can click on the tab that will appear here. Uh, for Windows, we are going to be going through undervolting, specifically of the CPU and GPU, something that is not uh, possible in macOS, the GPU that is. Uh, we will also be installing custom GPU drivers, uh, because this is an old uh, AMD graphics card within this. It's an M370X, which is a rebranded uh, M270X, which is a GCN1 card. So uh, it's an arch architecture from 2011 or 2012, so it's getting on in years. So custom drivers will be a big help. So. Let's get started. One of the main issues using a MacBook in Bootcamp, especially one of the 15-inch models with dedicated graphics cards, is that when the firmware detects that it's booting into a different boot environment than macOS, it will disable the integrated graphics card. So that means the Intel iGPU that is in this computer is currently disabled, and there's no way, uh, there is a way but it's very unpractical and we will not be covering it here, um, to enable the iGPU. So every kind of graphics acceleration that this machine does, it's through the DGPU. Unfortunately that pulls more power, so while uh, entirely undervolted on the CPU, uh, in macOS I could get, as I previously stated, about 7 hours, 7 to 8 hours. Uh, playing YouTube videos, uh, the same time for this computer is about three hours uh, in Windows. Uh, so it, it's quite a drastic decrease in battery life. Now there are some things we can do, undervolting the CPU is one, uh, and for uh, using Windows on a Mac, uh, usually you use it for gaming, and for that we will also be limiting the TDP of the CPU so that the GPU will not be hampered because it shares a heat sink. So uh, it's quite important that we limit the CPU so that the GPU can stretch its legs. Speaking of undervolting the CPU, that's where we will start. Now for undervolting the CPU in Windows, I like to use a program called Throttle Stop. Uh, there are especially two tabs that we need to pay attention to when in Throttle Stop. The first one is the FIVR tab. This is where the undervolting is done. And we especially need to pay close attention to the CPU core and the CPU cache. Uh, these two can usually be undervolted the same amount uh, and there's no real point in one going above the other. So when you encounter instability while decreasing your uh, voltage, just stop at the same point for both. Uh, the way you do this is that you load up a um, benchmarking tool, uh, like Cinebench, and then you just start a benchmark and uh, you unlock the adjustable voltage in both the CPU core and CPU cache. You decrease the voltage by 15 for each step. You remember to press OK, save voltages immediately, then apply, then OK, and then you let it run for a little bit, heat up, uh, and when you have tested that the 15 millivolt decrease is stable, you stop the benchmark. This is important because we want to force the CPU in a lower power mode. Undervolts are usually less stable in lower power uh, modes. So when you press stop and the machine crashes, you know you've gone too far. So even though it's stable in higher po power modes, the undervolt uh, is universal across all the power modes, so if it's unstable in only one power mode, it's still unstable, so you'll need to track back. Once you've found your stable undervolt, you can uh, make it so that uh, Throttle Stop starts with Windows using a program called Task Planner. Uh, at least that's the direct translation from Norwegian. Uh, the logo uh, looks like this and the program looks like this. So you want to uh, create a task and then you want to go through here. Uh, let's name it start TS for throttle stop. You want it to run with the highest administrative privileges. You want it to start. 
when you log in for all users, this is okay. And you wanted to start a program and then you navigate to where you have your throttles up. I have it in the downloads folder, which is not very intelligent, but that's where I have it. And you select throttlestop.exe and you press OK. The conditions, uh, there are no conditions and the settings, um, you will not stop the task uh, and you will not force it to stop and you will start a new uh, task in parallel and then OK. Uh, when you've done that, you will see it in your library right here on the start TS and you can double click and just make sure that all the settings are correct and then it will start with Windows. And congratulations, you have undervolted your CPU. Now the second tab that you want to pay close attention to is the one that says TPL. This is where you set your power limits. If you want to use very many CPU intensive tasks on this computer while in bootcamp and not the GPU as much, I recommend leaving this at about 40 or 45. For me, I'll be spending most of my time either doing very light stuff for the CPU or gaming. So for me, a lower TDP is fine. I will be setting it to 25. Remember to set both of the uh, short and long power limits to 25 and then hit apply and OK. And in that case, the uh, power limit will be locked at 25 watts. Now let's move on to the GPU. Uh, the GPU drivers will first need to be updated. Uh, the reason for this is that both GPU undervolting and overclocking, if you want to do that, is locked by the base drivers. Now, I only got this to work using this very specific update pattern. Uh, you might get it to work otherwise on your computer, but this is what worked for me. So first things first, we want to go into bootcampdrivers.com. We want to go to the compatibility list. And as you can see here, there is a note on the R9 M370X. May thermal throttle causing FPS dips. That's normal, we'll get to that. Compatible up to May 20. Uh, 21 edition, new versions will not work. This I have confirmed. Uh, so we will download and install the Legacy Drivers May 2021 edition Red Gaming Edition. So download that and install that. After that, uh, you want to download and install the RID custom drivers. These are not official, just like the bootcamp drivers, and they offer a bit more up-to-date game support. And most importantly, they unlock the ability to undervolt and overclock the GPU and the memory. So we would like to download the legacy drivers for GCN 1, 2, 3 based GPU. So that's a GCN 1st, 2nd and 3rd gen GPUs. Once that's installed, we want to download a overclocking software. I did try MSI Afterburner, unfortunately it did not work, so I am using Asus GPU Tweak 3. Once that is downloaded and installed, we can start undervolting our GPU. One of the main issues with the stock voltage and clock configuration on this GPU is that even with this computer, which is repasted with liquid metal, which is the best on the market, it will throttle uh, the GPU during prolonged sessions of GPU use. Uh, this is quite a problem because it throttles down from 800 megahertz, which is the highest power state by default, down to 400 megahertz, which uh, doesn't take a genius to figure out, is half. This happens no matter what game you play, uh, and it is a big, big problem. Now, the way to solve this is by undervolting the GPU. Now, when you first open GPU Tweak 3, it will look something like this. You can't really change the megahertz upwards, only downwards, and same with the GPU voltage. To change this, we are going to move on over to user mode, and here you can see I've uh, applied some settings, but still it doesn't quite look right, and it won't look like this when you first open this. To rectify this, we are going into the settings, we are going to, uh, well, just enable enhance overclocking range, uh, but I have to disable it and re-enable it to properly show you how it will look. 
Uh, the screen will blink as you uh, obviously saw, but that's entirely normal. Nothing dangerous happening here. So just enable it again and you will see. There we are. So now we have the overclock settings fully unlocked. And as you can see, I've uh, downvolted the GPU by 150 millivolts. I've also overclocked the GPU by 20 megahertz and the memory by 300 megahertz. This is about as high as I could go without any stability issues. Though, so, but it might seem unstable because as you can see when I open a YouTube video here, it shows artifacting on the screen. Uh, it kind of flickers in and out. Uh, but when I move on over to the overclock here and I select default mode and I go back into full screen, there is no artifacting. This is just a problem with either the driver or uh, with the Mac OS, uh, or not Mac OS, but Mac firmware uh, routing the signal to the display. Because when I plugged in an external display through the HDMI, this problem did not, did not occur, and it's entirely stable in games. What I have noticed is that this fault happens when it changes between the power modes. So for example, in 4K, it will change rapidly between uh, full power mode and kind of the middle power mode and the flickering happens in the change. So don't be alarmed by flickering when uh, doing this process, it's entirely normal. I do however recommend that when you are uh, going to use the computer normally, you change from user mode where you have your overclock to default mode. Now to do the undervolt, we are going to be opening a stress uh, benchmark like heaven. And this is not like undervolting the CPU, this is not universal. You are only touching the highest power mode. Uh, so whatever is stable with the highest power mode is the undervolt you should go for. Uh, as you can see, it flickered when turning on, but when it's locked in the higher power mode, it's very stable. Now, the way you do this is first you find the voltage that is stable. What you want to do the most with this computer is lower the voltage so that the max performance can be maintained. Don't be bothered by overclocking the core or the memory. It's kind of unimportant. I've done it for fun. This is the thing that is important. So here you want to go in intervals of 15 again. You want to test for about two to three minutes each uh, step and then you want to see where it ends up being unstable. For me this got unstable at uh, 930 with the base clock. I upped it to 950 and then I overclocked as far as I could get from there because uh, increasing the boost clock when you have undervolted does not increase power draw, at least not by much. Now you do the same for the memory clock, you just increase it until it's unstable and then you pull back about 100 uh, megahertz and then it's super. Now as you can see this is super stable in uh, the temperatures, the fans haven't even kicked in yet. I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit and then you can see where the temperatures end up at. Now, as you can see, something very strange happened while I benchmarked the GPU. The GPU didn't actually throttle in default mode. Uh, this is very strange, it usually happens. I don't know why it didn't happen this time. Uh, somehow the temperatures were better than usual as well. Uh, but either way, as you can see, we did have a performance increase and a temperature decrease and a fan noise decrease with the undervolt slash uh, overclock combination. So uh, still this worked. Now I, I want to end this off by giving a little hint uh, for gaming visuals on this computer. As you might know, this uh, GPU is quite old and quite weak. So uh, even with these settings, it's not very powerful. Uh, what you can do is run most of your games at 1280 by 800 resolution. This will match the aspect ratio of the screen. And you can go into the AMD software, go into games, global graphics, and then turn uh, Radeon image sharpening on and put it at 50%. This will increase the visuals of your games. Uh, as an example, here's a side-by-side -side from Skyrim.
Now, all we've covered in this video is software related, but there are of course a few hardware things you should do with these machines. Primarily, it's cleaning out the dust and changing the thermal paste, and if the tape that's covering the heat pipes that guides the air through the heat pipe fins has been removed, you want to replace that with another tape. These machines are also very practical in terms of changing the SSD, and if the battery is worn out, I recommend changing that as well. Now, that was all I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you and see you in the next one.